So this video is about how to do bond rotations using what I call the steering wheel analogy. And so we're going to spend the first part of this video actually not really talking specifically about bond rotations, but using a little bit of analogy to figure out how this applies to organic chemistry. But first of all, why might you need to learn how to do bond rotations? Well, it's an important skill, especially in the first semester of organic chemistry. It's especially important when you're covering topics such as conformations. So these are different three-dimensional uh, orientations of uh, molecules where you can have rotations of certain bonds among each other, giving th different three-dimensional shapes. There are also uh, situations in learning of the stereochemistry of molecules where you'll need to know how to do some simple bond rotations to be able to figure out how different molecules are related to each other. So I'm going to start with just describing the steering wheel analogy and what it, what it really means. So I want you to imagine that you're sitting in the wheel of your car and you're looking at your steering wheel. It's kind of like this old-fashioned steering wheel where it's got this this almost looks like a Mercedes-Benz symbol if you look at it from the end on. And um, your, your car is otherwise not very exciting, so you've decided to decorate your steering wheel with these like tassel type things. And uh, just give them different colors, okay? So it, it makes it a little bit more festive, you know, if you've got a steering wheel that's got these decorations on it. So Now imagine that you have to make a sharp right turn on your, you know, your, you're in your car and, you know, you're driving along and then you know, someone comes out on his bicycle and you have to make a sharp right turn and, and avoid hitting him. So you have to turn your steering wheel, let's say 120 degrees to the right. Now, what would your steering wheel look like when this has occurred? So, well, 120 degrees, each of these different arms of your steering wheel are going to rotate 180 to 120 degrees. So they're actually going to look exactly the same. Still going to look, well, kind of like the peace symbol, right? So except that your little tassels have, have also, they have moved. They kind of give away the fact that, that your uh, steering wheel has rotated. Okay, so your green is going to rotate 120 degrees clockwise, and your purple or pink is going to rotate 120 degrees clockwise, and your blue is going to rotate 120 degrees clockwise. So this is what it's going to look like after you've done this rotation. Okay. Uh, and so let's say that instead of turning 120 degrees to the right, you wanted to turn 120 degrees to the left. You're turning into your friend's house, stopping off in the afternoon, you're going to go to a barbecue, turn into his apartment, parking lot, and your steering wheel looks like this. So the green is going to be 120 degrees to the left, and your blue is going to be 120 degrees to the right, and then your pink is going to be 120 degrees this way so it's going to look like that okay so three different orientations of your steering wheel you can look at it from the front um, this is sort of in this normal orientation this is after you've rotated 120 degrees and this is after you've rotated 120 20 degrees to the right okay now this is what you see okay this is what you see when you're looking at your steering wheel now imagine you've got someone uh, as a passenger okay so you've got a passenger in your in your car and they are in your car while you're uh, avoiding hitting the bicyclist or turning over to, to, to go to your friend's party whatever your steering wheel your passenger in the in the passenger seat and they're looking at your steering wheel kind of like this so every steering wheel kind of has got this um, it's got this shaft right which connects to the the, the chassis and lets you turn your steering wheel. So this is the sort of, you've got your three components of your steering wheel, which have the tassels, and you've got a fourth component, which is kind of pointing in the back. Okay, so in each case, let's just think about what your steering wheel would look like in uh, each of these with, with all the decorations. So oh, that's blue, that's blue, okay, and that's green. So pink, blue, green, and then let's just repeat this for each of the other ones here. And we've got blue, and we've got pink, and the last example. So this is where it's rotated 120 degrees to the left. This is rotating 120 degrees to the right. Okay, and then in this case the blue is at the top, and then the green is in the 
bottom right and then the pink is in the bottom left. All right, so steering wheel looked at from, you know, the, the three different orientations looked at from a different angle, okay? Looked at from a different angle. Now, your passenger, okay, your passenger's looking at this and this blue, let, let's actually take the, the standard example. In the normal example where it hasn't been turned, the pink is kind of pointing straight towards them, right? So it's a little closer. So we can kind of describe that like we are used to describing molecules. When something's pointing out towards us, we can describe that as a wedge. And the blue is kind of pointing away from your passenger. So it's kind of a dash, right? And you can kind of repeat this for all these other examples. And, and the thing that's pointing straight up is actually in the same plane as the shaft in the back, okay? It's in the same plane. It's not, it's, it's not um, going towards them or going away from them. It's kind of in the same plane as the shaft. So if you assume the shaft is kind of the plane that we're observing, then it's not a dash or a wedge. So then we have three different situations where we've got it as a dash or as a wedge. Now where or how does this come into play? In how does it involve itself in organic chemistry? We're not usually dealing in organic chemistry with steering wheels with funky tassels on them. So how can we actually relate this to organic chemistry? Well, imagine that this steering wheel is you looking at a tetrahedral molecule from one end, okay? So molecules of carbon, single bonded, that are sp3 hybridized are tetrahedral. And if you look at them end on, okay, end on, you're gonna actually, you're not gonna be able to see the shaft. The shaft is kind of like hidden behind here, right? So we're looking at it end on, we're just gonna see these three. So imagine instead of green, pink, and blue uh, tassels, we instead had, let's just say, three different groups. Okay, so let's say green H, and then a blue CH3, and then let's say we have a pink uh, CL. Okay, so then we can just replace all of these different things. If we look on the side of the molecule, we can replace all of these with, so pink is always going to be, um, where were we here? So pink is going to be Cl, and blue is going to be CH3, and H, and green is going to be H, and let's just repeat that for everything else. Okay, so um, CH3, and Cl, and Cl, 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 CH3, 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 and then H, H, and H. Okay, so what we've described here is actually a way of showing how to do bond rotations. If you look at them from the, from the end, that's one way to show doing a bond rotation, but 99% of the time, unless you're dealing with uh, Newman projections, which is a different topic, you're not gonna be looking at an atom end on. Okay, you're gonna usually be looking at a molecule from the side. So let's just, divorce our uh, divorce this completely from the steering wheel okay and and just just draw it like a normal molecule so imagine that we had something like this and let's say this is some group R okay R and then we have uh, again we can just kind of ignore the steering wheel and and just redraw everything we have Here's our shaft, and here's this R. This is H, and this would be a, a wedge pointing out to our CL, and a dash pointing back to our CH3. And then, yeah, so let's just get rid of it for this as well. So, what lives this with this? So, the dash back to our CL, the wedge to our H, the straight line to our CH3, let's keep it in red actually, and let's have it with R. Okay, so yeah, maybe H, R, and then draw this slightly differently, CL, CH3. Okay, that's a slightly different way of drawing the same molecule. So if we're gonna rotate this 120 degrees clockwise, we would end up with this. So we'd have CH3, we'd have H as a wedge, 
you'd have H3C as a dash. And if we rotated this 120 degrees um, counterclockwise, then we would get CL up here, R, CH3, and then H. Okay, so notice what we've done here. R has been kept the same through all of these. R is kind of like the shaft in our steering wheel, right? It doesn't rotate. It's only the other three groups around the steering wheel that rotate. So when we rotate, we're going to move each of these groups 120 degrees, to either clockwise or counterclockwise. And so there's really three different ways of drawing um, this molecule, three different conformations. And we've shown how, what, how it changes as we go from the one in the middle, uh, as we rotate 120 degrees counterclockwise or rotate 120 degrees clockwise. So this analogy or the steering wheel analogy, if you will, is a helpful way of thinking about how to rotate molecules when you're just given a, um, a molecule on its um, drawn with two things that are flat, one's a dash, one's a wedge, how to think about and how to potentially apply how to rotate each of these molecules, thinking of it, like I said, as, as three components of a steering wheel. So in the next couple of videos, I'm gonna invite you to try using this technique out in applying it to a variety of different um, bond rotations.